share it with the, the church here. So, and it's, it's, a, it's a biblical card here. It says, and God said, let there be light. And lo and behold, there was your birthday cake. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. Hey, Pastor, I just uh, got a little something here in the bag. Could you just kind of pull it out, show the church what you got? And... <laughs> okay. So he's got some, uh, I guess, some, some small purpose rub for grilling, right? It's called the gospel. <laughs> You know, Pastor, we we thought that we got some of this. I got some. We got some other rub. We got some some grilling utensils. Oh. And thank uh, you. thought we know you like to grill. And we thought you could use those with your brand new grill that we we got you. Oh. So we, we 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 got Pastor. Uh, we, we 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 got Pastor uh, like the Cadillac of grills. You know, it can. Uh, it's a grill, it's a charcoal grill, gas grill, it's, it's got a smoker, we got a cover for it, oh, propane tank, we got charcoal, thank you. Oh my. we got the whole kit and caboodle, uh, and we just want to tell you that thank we, you. we love you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now the last couple of days make sense. I've been out looking at grills, and I was thinking about this, and my wife was saying, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. I said, I'm going to order this. She said, no, 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 don't order it, don't order it. And it was like, thank you so much. Well, well that's so special. Thank you. Now I guess you're going to want me to use it, right? Okay. Huh? Yes. Well, our, our church picnic is going to be the Great American Grill Off, so you don't want to miss that. That is so special. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. All right, if you'll join me in standing, grab your hymnals, please. 461. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King. Sing it out now. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light. today. We had a power outage this past week, so that's why the screens are not up and running. So join me in grabbing your hymnal if you haven't already. 461 on that second. Pressing more closely to him who is leading when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us. Happy
Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, and we can gather in the house of God with the Word of God and the people of God, having the Spirit of God. Lord, we ask that you would uh, take your plan in the local assembly and work all of these uh, different parts together, and that you would lift up your name and glorify yourself today. Thank you for the Word of God today and its sufficiency in our lives. Lord, we, we pause and uh, we give a, just a moment as we think about our nation today and how we cry out to the O God that you would be merciful, that Lord, you would send us a fresh wave of reviving uh, to America. Uh, dear Lord, that you would burden our own hearts as we pray for our nation and its direction. But dear Lord, we're here, and I, I pray, dear God, now that you would suit all these things to the people of God also, that we be uplifted and encouraged in Jesus' uh, precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you are with us for the first time, or the first time in a long time as the men move back through, if you would just hold your hand up, they have some material they'd like to give you. Say, Preacher, this is our first time here. Some things we hope that will be a help to you, encouragement to you. Um, just uh, real quickly, I want to remind uh, the church family that tonight is a very, very, very special service. The Academy of Arts is with us. They'll be putting on the play Pilgrim's Progress. Um, uh, there's probably 15 people involved with this. It's a big deal. I encourage you to come early um, if you would. We will have an announcement about younger children tonight, and we'll talk about that then. But also then Vacation Bible School is uh, coming upon us. Uh, that's next week. Uh, help us with that. Spread the news about that. If you still have a desire to be involved, if you would see um, uh, Pastor Luke about that, he can certainly find a place for you. All right. On that note, on Saturday, all that can make it, all that are signed up for VBS to help, we will be having a meeting at 930 in the morning. So everybody that can possibly make it, would you please remember 930 here at the church. Let's go ahead and stand once again as we sing number 533, Joy in Serving Jesus.
it's our joy to greet one another with a handshake. Let's go ahead and shake hands just for a minute. If I can go ahead and get my choir up here.
Amen. this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Michael Miller to ask the blessing on the offering, and then you may be seated. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning, for your presence here. And Lord, I'm thankful that I can say it is well with my soul today. Yes. And I, yes. I pray that all here in this congregation can mm -hmm. say that same thing. Yeah. Please bless this offering to the furtherance of thy kingdom. Anoint the pastor to preach. Have your will in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jeremy Grant. I am the young couple Sunday school class teacher. And uh, Pastor asked me just to come up here and say a word for a moment. Uh, we're beginning a new curriculum next Sunday. We're going to be looking at managing God's money. It's a biblical guide to managing finances. Uh, as we just seek to, to use our money to honor and glorify God, as we uh, try to keep the proper attitude towards that, toward those, towards those finances. So uh, if you're a young couple, uh, up to about age 45-ish or so, uh, then uh, come on back with us. We have coffee, which is good. Uh, always need that after we drop off the kids. Uh, but I appreciate it. Uh, if everybody that would, would be there, I got a pretty good normal group. Uh, but if you're uh, interested in that, biblical money management, then come on back and join us. Uh, you can see me after the service and we can talk a little bit about it. Thank you. I noticed every year the age of that group keeps going up. <laughs> don't understand that, but uh, uh, we will also be, I don't want to say the old group, it just doesn't sound right. Senior Saints, we'll go there. Um, we will be starting a new class as well. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the resilient life. And we're going to do, this is going to be a practical study. This will be a, a, a study on uh, topics that are relevant to you today. Um, uh, it is a, a lesson that will help you to understand that you can overcome anything in your life. 
doesn't make a difference what it is. And we'll deal with 10 different areas of our life that, that uh, we can uh, have assurance that we can overcome. So I hope you'll join us. Uh, we don't have coffee. We don't have donuts. Unless somebody wants to steal from the young couples class. <laughs> and I'm okay with that too. So, uh, but, uh, but as you can tell, we, we try to have fun. Uh, but uh, if you would take your uh, take your Bibles, take your Bibles and turn to Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19. Stand with me as we read the Word of God. Join with me as we pick up in verse 7, Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Two powerful verses. Amen. Two powerful verses. Looking forward to the message on this today. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. Amen. Lord, what, what a great thing it is to, to have possession of your truth. And we just ask, Lord, that as we look at these, these verses here today, as we, we uh, hear what you have given to the pastor, as, you, as he expounds upon uh, your truth, that we would be attentive, that we would be receptive, but most of all, Lord, that we would take what we learn and that we would make application that we can honor and glorify you in every area of our life. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we just ask now that you would bless above measure. And in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know. I think we may have to start a series on the Ten Commandments, like uh, <laughs> thou shalt not steal and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we did, uh, we are also having our college and career class that will be starting next week, this year that's still functioning. The, the, the First Steps Discipleship class has just finished. Thank you, by the way, for all of those that went through that and uh, looking forward to us getting together uh, there in July. And uh, we'll start that and go back through that again. But just so thrilled. Um, that we could have all of those things taking place and happening. We're in today uh, Psalm 19. Uh, psalm 19 is uh, an exciting psalm in the Bible. It has two major sections to it. Uh, if you're taking notes, uh, the first um, six verses deal with what we would call general revelation. Those two movements that are here. The first thing is, notice if you would, Psalm 19 and 1, the heavens declare, shout if you would, the glory of God. And he begins to deal with uh, the truths of creation. Um, uh, some of you are familiar with uh, the big swing at the wilds. How many of you are familiar with that? Okay, and uh, trust me, the rest of you probably don't want to be familiar with that. Um, <clears throat> I remember getting on that swing with a man by the name of Cliff Hartley. And we, were on, we got on this thing together, big mistake, and uh, this swing is like this. I mean way down and way up. And what I couldn't understand as we're heading toward our death, as it were, when this thing let go, is Cliff is just laughing his head off. And, and you know, I'm a little intimidated because it's more like I have my eyes closed as we're heading down there. Only afterwards when we got off, I found out that when Cliff laughs, it's because he's scared. Okay? Well, now I find out. Well, if you would, heading down toward earth on that swing is a, a little bit like this. We're talking, and he's dealing and elevating creation as the revelation of God. Creation speaks, shouts, there is a God. But after we, as it were, don't hit the ground, but think you're going to, and we're heading up toward the sky, 
I deal with the second part of the psalm, starting in verse number 7 and down to verse number 12, and that's dealing with specific revelation. You'll notice verse 7 again, the law of the Lord. So if you would, you have two great movements in this psalm. The first is natural revelation. Uh, the second is specific revelation, the Word of God. And on the specific revelation, I want you to notice, if you would please, just follow along the phrases in verse number 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The statutes of the Lord are right. The commandments of the Lord are pure. The fear of the Lord is clean. The judgments of the Lord are true. Now, in those statements, they break into two sections, and we're going to actually just look at the first section of those statements today in verse number 7 and 8, talking about the Word of God. How many of you have ever heard the name Billy Sunday? Okay, Evangelist Billy Sunday. Let me just read something that was in, that was found when uh, Dr. Sunday passed, that was found in his Bible. It said this, 29 years ago, with the Holy Spirit as my guide, I entered at the, the portal of Genesis. I walked down the corridor of the Old Testament art gallery were pictures of Noah and Abraham and Moses and Joseph and Isaac and Jacob and Daniel hung on the wall. I passed into the music room of the Psalms where the spirit sweeps the keyboard of nature until it seems like every reed and pipe and God's great organ responds like the harp of David, the sweet singer of Israel. I entered the chamber of Ecclesiastes where the voice of the preacher is heard and the conservatory of Sharon and the lily of valley where sweet spice is filled and perfume my life. I entered the business office of Proverbs and onto the observatory of the prophets where I saw telescopes of various size pointing to far off events concentrating on the bright and morning star which was arrived above the mountain hills of Judea for the hope of our salvation and redemption. I entered the audience room of the King of Kings catching a vision written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John there. The correspondence room, I entered again and found there in the correspondence room Peter and Paul and James and John writing their epistles. And then at last I stepped into the throne room of Revelation where the towering glitter peaks I saw. And oh my, there sat the King of Kings upon his throne with the glory and the healing of those nations. And I cried out, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Last week I, I brought a message ending that message, if you would, 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And I, I want to follow that up today, and I want to uh, preach to us for a few moments on this question, is your Bible sufficient for today? Is this Bible that we have sufficient for today? Is it sufficient in 2023 for our political situation? Is it, is it sufficient for where you are with your, your finances and your retirement? Is it sufficient for husband and wife problems and how to raise children and teenagers? Is it sufficient? Does it answer uh, the, the questions of, of science and creation? Does it answer the question, is it sufficient as I live my life out in the world today, in this United States of America? This word, is it sufficient? 
I want to say to you, and I, I, I say this um, without reservation, that the Word of God is absolutely and completely sufficient. I want you to notice, if you would please, um, today, just an overview of the verse. Let me read that verse 7 and 8 one more time. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. What an explanation here of the law, the testimony, the statutes, the commandments, the various application of it. Here's the law, here's the testimony, here's the statutes, here's the commandment. Can I say to you that when it comes to this Bible, that every topic we go to, we find answers that are absolutely specific or in principle to give us what we need for our life. In this Bible I have a complete compilation of an inspired revelation from the God of Heaven. And it's all that we need. Amen. I want to tell you that you have a trustworthy, trustworthy compilation in the Bible, 66 books of what God has given. Amen. It's a complete compilation. We are not missing anything. The Bible stands alone, if you would, in its task in gathering what God wants to say. And I don't have to go outside of the Bible to find any other inspired revelations. Amen. Science, health, and key to the Scripture, um, uh, the, the Book of Mormon. Um, the lost gospels, um, if you would. On and on the list goes. May I say about this book in explanation that the authority of Scripture, now listen to me, is not based on the fact that the church is authoritative. In other words, the church does not sit over and sway, as it were, when it comes to the Word of God. It is the Word of God that gives sway and leadership to the church. Right. Whenever you have a church that sets itself over the Scripture, you're going to end up in false doctrine right. every time. Here is our sole authority for life and practice. This Scripture, I can see it in a practical sense um, that there are, there are clear conclusions on so many areas of the questions that we have in life. And if there is not a clear conclusion, there's clear principles that I can derive by. I'm glad when I go from Old to New Testament that I don't find things that are contradictory. I'm glad that when I go from the nation of Israel to the church, I can see the hand of God. I'm glad that when I go to the shedding of blood uh, of the sacrifices in the Old Testament to the Lamb of God in the New Testament, that it is all tied together. Amen. Can I say a word to you about its author? That its author is divine. It is from Him and it is of Him. The same God that spoke the worlds into existence has spoken His Word into existence. The same God, by the way, that moved upon Adam uh, with His knowledge, uh, with the inspiration of God back in that day to name all of the animals and the host of heaven. That same God in a much more specific principle moved upon men. To give them the exact words and the whole of every thought. To be able to write word for word in the whole uh, of, of every complete thought, the Word of God. Amen. Would you notice please, the Bible says, notice it in verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. The testimony of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord. This is still said and God honors it 
after it was written. In other words, I go to the New Testament that says, but all Scripture, looking back to the Old Testament revelation, is given by God. In other words, after God's Word was written, God honored what was written Amen. as His Word. Amen. What a powerful and wonderful truth that is. May I say to you that God cannot err? Therefore, the Bible is the Word of God. Therefore, the Bible cannot err in an inspired gift from God. Do we understand uh, the touch of man uh, upon the text of the Bible? And you think that man touches, he soils. Well, of course we understand that. We, of course, understand here that I don't have an original autograph, but I have a trustworthy copy of what God has given I understand that. And I'm glad that every language around the world can have an accurate translation of what I believe the Lord has given. I glory in that. I hope that you do. What is the purpose of these words in, in this book? Number one, the purpose is to pull back, if you would, um, the curtains on the theater screen of this world that they could see the God of heaven. Amen. That not him, but that we, we would be vessels as we share the word of God, that he would be lifted up, not mankind, Amen. not the local church, but the Lord Jesus Christ, not the nation of Israel itself, but the God of the nation of Israel. This book has been provided to convert the soul, to make wise the simple, to rejoice the heart, and to enlighten the mind. No conflicts here between these purposes. Its focus here is to glorify God and to change mankind. I want to say to you, and you hear me this today, I want to say to you that the Bible is sufficient. Wherever you are, the Bible is sufficient. I'm telling you that in the darkest night, and tears flow down your face, and you don't understand the Bible is sufficient. May I also say to you that I have, I have studied this book for a while. I'll just say a while. Okay? I don't understand all of this book. But one day I will. Okay, aren't you glad you don't serve a God that you can understand? Huh? I mean, I'm glad that He's revealed to us what we know. You know what I mean? Okay? But no, God's so far above us and past us, but He's given us everything we need in this book. His author is divine. But now notice, if you would please, a few specifics here. Notice, if you would play the sufficiency of the law of God. It says here, the law of the Lord is perfect. Why? Converting the soul. The law, the teaching of Scripture, more than just the, the Decalogue, the Torah, if you would, the whole body of truth, this law, this teaching, this instruction, this doctrine is what? It is perfect. It is blameless, if you would. It is complete. By the way, whatever comes forth from God is perfect. <clears throat> it tells us here that the law of the Lord is perfect. And what does it do? Converting the soul. It's perfect. It's blameless. <clears throat> And it has the ability to revive, to change, to restore, uh, to renew completely what? The soul of mankind. As the law of the Lord is, is given forth, what? Men hear of the Word of God. As the New Testament tells us, and it's the, the seed of the Word of God that falls into the heart, and that seed of the Word of God uh, bursts the new nature, as it were. And once we're saved, we now have an old and new nature. But we have a new capacity for God. All of that comes from this light, from this book. Aren't you glad that the law of the Lord is perfect? 
we're not perfect, but the law of the Lord is. <clears throat> and I'm glad that the Bible says it converts the soul. So let me ask you today, exactly how is it with you and your soul? How is it with you and your soul, whether you're a church member or not a church member? How is it? Would you be okay today if I, if I were to pull this mic and it were a lever to take this congregation to the very gates of glory? And each one of us would stand individually, but toward the greatest being that we have, we have ever begun to comprehend and yet not comprehended. Well, what, what, would he be happy with you? And you, would you be happy to see him? Would your soul be okay? If not, can I say to you that this book has been given what? It's a perfect revelation from God for converting the soul. I can't do that. Your friends can't do that. And trust me, when you think you're all right with the vow of salvation story that comes from your own heart, no, 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 no. This is what's perfect. This is the law of God. This tells us that we're a sinner. This tells us that there's a Savior. This tells us that we need to be saved and call upon. I want to ask you, how is it with you and your soul today? Please. 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 Don't leave the doors of this church today with a question about your soul. You know, the Bible is God's grocery store for your hungry heart. Not only is the Bible here, if you would, sufficient, the law of God is, is sufficiency of the testimony of God. Notice, please, it says here, <clears throat> the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The testimony, God's testimony. The Ten Commandments are a revelation of, of who God is and His character and heart. Here's the testimony. Here's the witness of you. Here's God publicly, publicly setting forth who he is and how to know him. And, and we, have, we have these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of Scripture that we can see him and understand him and see the examples and the burdens and the circumstances, the heartaches and the victories that people have. Oh, the Word of God. It's his testimony. It is this Bible is God bearing his testimony to the world. It is Word and His person that's revealed. And it says right here that the testimony of the Lord, of the Lord is sure. It stands. It's unmovable. It's anchored, if you would. The attacks upon it will, will fall away. The hammers that come upon the anvil of the Word of God will wear out. Uh, what a blessing that even though I have uncertainties and I don't understand everything and you have uncertainties and you don't understand everything, that we can open up the book of books, the Word of God, and we can have comfort for our soul. We can have things that we're absolutely sure of. You know, there are things in this world that shake all the time. Here is a book that is unshakable. I'm telling you that your Bible is sufficient for you today. Yes. No matter where you are, no matter how old you are, no matter what your circumstances, the Bible is sufficient. The Bible is sufficient yes. for you wherever you are. I'm glad that I have something to rest upon that hastens away from the quicksands of this earth's surety. I'm glad that I have a divine revelation. I believe that with all of my heart, with all of my life, I have the Word of God. I'm so glad Brother Mike was up here and was so kind to represent the church. I'm so glad for brothers and sisters that we can lean upon in the assembly. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? But none of them that you lean upon are perfect. 
Some are more handsome than others, but not perfect. <laughs> but this is perfect. So you, you can lean upon here. I can lean upon it, and I'm not going to have a, a broken reed that's going to run through my hand. No, 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 I can lean upon this. I can lean upon this. Oh, please don't understand. That doesn't mean that we aren't going to go through good times and sometimes horrific times. Why, he told us that was going to happen. Okay? But you, you can do away with this book. You can die this book. You can burn this book. But this book stands. And these words stand. Congregation of Emmanuel Baptist Church, July 2023, the Bible is sufficient. The Bible is sufficient for where you are and what you have. I'm glad it sure means it's not variable. It's not capable of battling opinion. In other words, when I'm, I'm glad that I go to an Old Testament that's in harmony with the New Testament. I'm glad that the Gospels are in harmony with the Epistles. I'm glad that the parables are in harmony with the miracles. I'm glad that the promises are in harmony with the commands of the Bible. Your, your frustration or lack of understanding is not because the Bible is at fault. Amen. Each amount of Scripture, now listen to me, each amount of Scripture given was sufficient for each stage of history, and can I say redemptive history. When God gave what He gave to Moses, it was enough for Moses in that period, and David in that time period. We come to the New Testament. Each time that God has opened up and revealed. And by the way, you know, I hope you understand that the Bible is a progressive revelation that, that, that buds and has bloomed like a flower and now is complete and finished. Let me emphasize that. It's complete and finished. And when you have people come and tell you that God has given you revelation outside of this book, you know that they were the Anthony's that had too many pepperonis on their pizza. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't be adding to this book. Don't you be adding to this book. This is sufficient. It, it, it is done. I'm so, I'm so thrilled about that. The, the sufficiency of God's Word in its completeness, in its authority, is sufficient for the day. In other words, when I say this Bible is sufficient, I'm saying that you don't need another chapter on the end of the book of Revelation or another chapter in Genesis. That God has given us everything we need for mankind. Everything we need is here as you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 29. A verse you might want to mark, Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29. If you haven't found it by now, just open your Bible and smile. Everybody will think you're fine. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. This can bring you to tears. Do you hear what he just said? That what he has revealed to us belongs unto us and our children. Just hug this old book. I remember a man by the name of Michael Gangemella. Michael ended up in the homes of Lester Roloff, just full of addictions. I mean, when that guy got saved, he got a dose. You know what I mean? Ended up pastoring a church in Delaware. But the Bible meant so much to him, I'll never forget, when he got married, he walked forward with his Bible. 
And when he walked down the aisle after they pronounced him husband and wife, his wife was on one hand and his Bible was on the other. He was showing to his family how much <clears throat> that book met. If I haven't said this, oh, by the way, one more thing. Notice it, please, to you and your children that we may what? I'll tell you, let's read that together. That we may do all the words of this law. It was given to us that we may do. Not, 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 not given to us. You know, a little, a little problem here gets a little scary when we become mature Christians and we really know everything. We know the doctor and we know the procedures and we just sort of can float like we're retired in our spiritual life. Not so. Do. Let's do it. Let's, let, let's do, the Bible says here. Let, let, let's do it. Oh, by the way, if I haven't said this yet, the Bible is sufficient for you today. <laughs> I want you to notice, if you would please, that it says <clears throat> back in Psalm 19 and verse 7, again, the law of the Lord is perfect. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise. What wise? Uh, the simple. It gives us the sufficiency of wisdom that I need. I find it here. Number three, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes literally has the idea of order. They lay out a proper path for us of the, through the intricate complexities of our life. Um, how many of you have ever taught a child to drive? You remember those times? Uh, how many of you have a story that you could tell us about teaching someone to drive? Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when, we, when we first, we, we trust Christ and we're growing, what's happening is we're learning how to drive. You know? Uh, th things... Uh, uh, things aren't quite the way that we want to. They're not settled yet. And it takes time, what? To begin to learn the statutes of God, steering us in the right way. But God's Word directs people in the right way. And it's what is that way? A way that pleases the Lord. Everything that, that you've bought that um, has some intricacy to it, you probably have got something that said, here's instructions. Well, may I say to you that our salvation has instructions, okay? Not for how to be saved, we are saved, but how to live this life. It says right here, these statutes, these orders are right. They're right. I want to tell you what, well, I'll tell you what, here is a word, this idea that really uh, the modern day um, woke liberal crowd really hates. There's a standard of truth. It's right. There are some things that are right, and there are some things that are wrong. That's right. The Bible says the statutes are right. It means to make straight, to smooth. It's upright. Opposite of crookedness, if you would. The Bible is morally right, practically right, universally right. It's right. Yes. The statutes of the Lord are right. The idea behind that is they are righteous, they are holy, they are true, they are always right. When you search for answers, okay, it, it's amazing what we do when we search for answers. We're, we're searching for answers, a problem comes up, we're not expecting, we don't want to do, and you know what we do? Hey Earl, can I talk to you? Hey, John, can I talk to you? Hey, Mike, can I talk to you? Joe, can I talk to you? And we haven't talked to the book. The statutes of the Lord are right. I do not mean to miss, to belittle some of, can I put it this way, the gray areas in our life. Because we have them. And there are some situations comes up. There are, there are deep valleys and how high mountaintops in which we're, we're struggling as a Christian. But give the Bible a chance. At least in principle. 
to be able to set forth a direction for you. Oh, it's wonderful to get the counsel of brethren, but that's secondarily to the book. It's wonderful to have the promptings of the Holy Spirit, but to be sure, we got to go to the book. It's wonderful to have circumstances that got us, and they do, but we got to go to the book. Why, the statutes of the Lord are right, the Bible says, rejoicing the heart. Why is that? Why rejoicing the heart here? Because. When we make decisions for Christ that cost us, and they're uncomfortable, and maybe bring tears to our eyes, when you do what is right, there's still a confidence and a peace, and we can have a rejoicing in our heart, even if others don't understand, and the world doesn't understand. Okay? Ultimately, Ultimately, you have people looking for peace and want to be settled. Well, I'll tell you how you find that. The statutes of the Lord are right. And when, I, when I'm finally saying, God, you're right. God, your word is right. You're right. What happens? There's a settled joy. As a matter of fact, more than that, as I obey the word of God, it says there can be a rejoicing. Praise the Lord. I remember once... Uh, a pastor uh, here in uh, the, era, the area, Brother Farrell, down in Shenandoah. I was at a pastor's meeting, and he come in laughing. And I said, Brother, what, what, what is going on? He goes, oh, preacher. He said, I was out visiting this morning, and they started throwing watermelon at me. <laughs> and I said, yeah. He goes, isn't that great? I mean, he was just, well, what, what was he saying? <laughs> okay. He was saying, I was doing what God said I was supposed to do. And <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> I can rejoice there. Notice lastly, the efficiency of the commands of God. By the way, if I haven't said it yet, just to be sure, the Bible was sufficient. Notice, please, the commands of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The sufficiency of the commands of God, the commands, the specific, the no doubt about it, the rules of God. Oh, my, problem again. Why? Because we are saying, you understand, this is the struggle in this society, in this world. They do not have an authority. Everything's movable. Everything is. If there's a standard that is put up, this world loves nothing better than to be able to knock it down. To be able to see that wasn't right, that didn't stand, see that, see that, see that. No, 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 no. One of the reasons this book is hated, why? Is because it's an authority. It's a standard. The reason Christ was hated. Why? They hated his works. If Jesus Christ came back today, and again, you've heard it a hundred times, we would crucify him again. Why? Because that is not standard. It's not wanted. May I say to you that the words of this book are not up for debate in the sense of is an obedience. Here is our authority. It is the word of God, the Bible. It says that the commandments of the Lord here is pure. There's no mixture of error. There's no defilement. There's no stain of, of sin that pollutes it. It's unadulterated. It's, it's not diluted. I have the Word of God. And I'm glad it says it enlightens the eyes. In other words, it purges away. It has its own sense of purity. It brings with it. Enlighten the eyes means that which is going to, I'm going to gain confidence, I'm going to gain light, but it will bring cheer and it will bring comfort. Light brings surety, you see. Confidence that a light is in the midst of darkness. No matter where that light is. The light 
It speaks of the radiance of God. It brings things clear. It makes it lucid, if you would, for us to be able to see. Turn with me to John 1, if you would. John 1. Notice John 1. <clears throat> John 1, and let's go to verse 1. John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word, speaking of Christ, was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Verse 9, that was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Let me ask you, how many of you have a cell phone? Because I see your hand. Of course, I know they're all turned off. Thank you for that. How many of you have ever used the light on your cell phone? Oh, wow. You other, you don't know what you're missing. Why did we use the light? I, because I couldn't see. I, I needed to see clearer. Um, maybe I, uh, I forgot to turn the porch light on. I needed to get into the house with the keys. I'm, I'm hunting for something. I dropped something. Whatever it was, we needed light to be able to see. I'm telling you, the commandments of God, what they enlighten us. They bring light. He is that light. In case I didn't mention it yet this morning, I want to be sure that I do that. The Bible is sufficient. Amen. The Bible is sufficient. Doesn't mean we aren't going to have questions. No, no, no. It, it doesn't mean that we aren't going to have observations and we're not going to have, and we're going to have discussions and we're, and we're going to have to maybe dig some here and dig some here. But overall, I'm here to tell you that we have a sufficient revelation from God. This book, don't you let anyone make you doubt it. Amen. Are the word of God stands upon the person of God. He said that he'll elevate this book above his name. Stand on the Bible. Teach your teenagers, teach your children, teach your classes what the Bible is sufficient. Let's pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. One of you be here today and you say, Pastor, I am not sure. You talk about the sufficiency of Scripture. I'm not sufficient in my relationship with Christ. I don't know if something happened to me that I'm really born again. I'm saved. I'm not sure about it. Pastor, I'm not sure about it. I'm not going to come back. I'm not going to call out your name. I'm not going to embarrass you. I won't do that. But between me, you, and God, I'd like to pray for you today. You're here and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I am not sure about my salvation. Would you pray for me? Would you just slip your hand up right there? That's right. Hold your hand up and take it right back down. I'm going to say it again. Someone else, hold your hand up. I'm not sure. God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have an invitation. If you want to come forward, those of you that raised your hands, I'm going to take someone off the side, take a Bible and show you how you can know you can be saved. Let's get that settled today. But I'm not going to come back. I'm not going to embarrass you. I want to leave that situation in your hands. Would you stand with me, please? Heads bowed, eyes closed. This is an invitation. If God has spoken to you, say, Pastor, I want to be sure right now. I want to be sure. You just come right now. That's right. Someone else. 